covering your mouth in note. Prime Minister Modi dedicates to the nation a 750 megawatt solar project in Riva in Madhya Pradesh via video conferencing, terming the solar energy as sure, pure and secure. Prime Minister says that solar energy will be one of the biggest mediums to fulfill the energy needs of the 21st century. Prime Minister Modi says for the government, the environment protection is not limited to some projects, but this is a way of life, says all the programs of the government are giving priority to environment protection and the ease of living. Arrested gangster Vikas Dube killed in an encounter with the police while trying to flee. Dube snatched the pistol from the policemen and fired at them after his vehicle turned total. Police fired in self-defense that resulted in a bullet injury to Dube. India and China holding meeting of the working mechanism for consultation and coordination on border affairs today. The joint secretary level talks being held virtually and the joint secretary east will represent India in the meeting. Uttar Pradesh government to impose a weekend lockdown in the state from 10 at night till 5 in the morning on Monday except for essential and some other services. The 10 districts of Bihar under lockdown from today for different duration. A seven-day lockdown clamped in all the containment zones across West Bengal. Lockdown in two upper Assam districts of Golaghat and Jorhat began last night. The United States imposes sanctions on three senior officials of the Chinese Communist Party, including a member of the ruling Politburo for alleged human rights abuses targeting ethnic and religious minorities that China has detained in the western part of the country. Hello and good afternoon. You're watching Doordarshan News with me, Nancy Kohli. A top story: Prime Minister Modi has today dedicated to the nation a 750 megawatt solar project installed at Riva in Madhya Pradesh. This Riva project comprises three solar generating units of 250 megawatts each, located on a 500 hectare plot of land situated inside a solar park. The project will reduce the carbon emission equivalent to approximately 15 lakh tons of carbon dioxide per year. The Riva Solar Project was the first solar project in the country to break the Great Parity Barrier. Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivrat Singh Chauhan, the Union Energy Minister R.K. Singh, Agriculture Minister Narendra Singh Tomar and many ministers participated in the program via video conferencing. And on this occasion, Prime Minister Modi said that Madhya Pradesh will not only get electricity from the bigger solar project, uh, the power project in Asia, but the Delhi Metro will also get electricity generated from the Riva solar power plant. Prime Minister added that India is among the top five countries in the world in solar energy and it will become the medium of all the energy needs of the 21st century because it is pure, sure and secure. जब तैयार हो जाएंगे तो मध्य प्रदेश निश्चित रूप से सस्ती और साफ सुथरी बिजली का हब बन जाएगा इसका सबसे अधिक लाभ मध्य प्रदेश के गरीब मध्यम वर्ग के परिवारों को होगा किसानों को होगा हमारे आदिवासी भाइयों बहनों को होगा सौर ऊर्जा आज की नहीं बल्कि 21वीं सदी की ऊर्जा जरूरतों का एक बड़ा माध्यम होने वाला है क्योंकि सौर ऊर्जा शोर है प्योर है और सिक्योर है Prime Minister Modi has said that India has emerged as the most attractive global market for clean energy. While launching a 750 megawatt solar project, Prime Minister Modi also said that the state will emerge as a major hub for clean and cheap power in the country. 
जिस तरह से भारत में सोलर पावर पर काम हो रहा है ये चर्चा लगातार होने वाली है चर्चा बढ़ने वाली है और लोग भारत से सीखने का प्रयास भी करने वाले हैं ऐसे ही बड़े कदमों के कारण भारत को क्लीन एनर्जी का सबसे एट्रैक्टिव मार्केट माना जा रहा है आज जब रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी की तरफ ट्रांजिशन को लेकर दुनिया में चर्चा होती है तो इसमें भारत को मॉडल के रूप में देखा जाता है साथियों दुनिया की समग्र मानवता की भारत से इसी आशा इसी अपेक्षा को देखते हुए हम पूरे विश्व को जोड़ने में जुटे हुए हैं इसी सोच का परिणाम आईसा यानी इंटरनेशनल सोलर अलायंस आईसा इसका हमने निर्माण किया है वन वर्ल्ड वन सन वन ग्रिड के पीछे की यही भावना है Prime Minister said that as India is moving towards the new peak of development and hopes and aspirations are increasing the prime minister reiterated the message of self-reliance and progress he said the economy is an important aspect and environment and economy go hand in hand jaise jaise bharat vikas ke naye shikhar ki taraf badh raha hai hamari aashaein aakankshaye bhi बढ़ रही है और वैसे वैसे हमारी ऊर्जा की बिजली की जरूरतें भी बढ़ रही है ऐसे में आत्मनिर्भर भारत के लिए बिजली की आत्मनिर्भरता बहुत आवश्यक है जब हम आत्मनिर्भरता की बात करते हैं प्रगति की बात करते हैं तो इकोनॉमी उसका एक अहम पक्ष होता है पूरी दुनिया के नीति निर्माता बरसों से दुविधा में हैं कि इकोनॉमी की सोचे या एनवायरमेंट की सोचे इसी उहाप में फैसले कहीं एक पक्ष में लिए जाते हैं और कहीं दूसरे पक्ष में लिए जाते लेकिन भारत ने ये दिखाया है कि ये दोनों एक दूसरे के विरोधी नहीं है बल्कि एक दूसरे के सहयोगी है And speaking on the occasion, the Madhya Pradesh uh, Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan said that this project will set new heights in generation of cost-effective electricity in India. He also said that the solar power project is a game-changer project and will produce electricity at much cheaper cost. काफी बड़ा हिस्सा बंजर भूमि का फायरिंग रेंज के रूप में जिसका इस्तेमाल होता था पड़ा था तब मन में ये विचार आया कि हम सोलर पावर प्लांट स्थापित किया जाता है किया जा सकता है इस विचार को हमने आगे बढ़ाया कि रीवा सौर परियोजना ने सौर ऊर्जा के क्षेत्र में नए कीर्तिमान रचे हैं जिसे इसे गेम चेंजर परियोजना के रूप में मान्य किया गया है माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी इस परियोजना की जो महत्वपूर्ण उपलब्धि उपलब्धियां हैं वो मैं देश को बताना चाहता हूं एक तो रीवा सौर परियोजना प्रथम सौर परियोजना जिससे प्राप्त विद्युत आती ऊर्जा से प्राप्त विद्युत से सस्ती है इस परियोजना से प्रथम बार ओपन एक्सेस के माध्यम से राज्य के बाहर किसी व्यवसायिक संस्थान दिल्ली मेट्रो को बिजली प्रदान की जा रही है 24 प्रतिशत बिजली दिल्ली मेट्रो को जा रही है बाकी का लाभ मध्य प्रदेश उठा रहा है Moving on now the arrested gangster Vikas Dube was killed in an encounter with the police after a police vehicle carrying him uh, from Ujjain to Kanpur met with an accident and he tried to escape from the spot in the Bhauti area four policemen were also injured in the incident according to police the accident took place in the morning when it was raining heavily and the police vehicle overturned near Kanpur 
The police added that Dubey snatched the pistol from policemen and fired at them after his vehicle turned turtle. The police fired in self-defense that resulted in bullet hitting Dubey. He was rushed to the hospital where he was declared dead. The gangster was the prime accused in the Kanpur ambush in which eight policemen were killed. मुख्य अभियुक्त विकास दुबे निवासी बिक्रू थाना चौबेपुर कानपुर नगर को उज्जैन मध्य प्रदेश पुलिस द्वारा गिरफ्तार किए जाने के पश्चात उत्तर प्रदेश पुलिस व एस टीम द्वारा आज कानपुर नगर लाया जा रहा था कानपुर नगर भौती के पास प्रातः साढ़े छः बजे पुलिस के उक्त वाहन दुर्घटनाग्रस्त होकर पलट गया जिससे उसमें बैठे अभियुक्त व पुलिस जन घायल हो गए इस दौरान अभियुक्त विकास दुबे उपरोक्त ने घायल पुलिसकर्मी की पिस्टल छीनकर भागने की कोशिश की वो पुलिस टीम पर फायर करने लगा पुलिस द्वारा आत्मरक्षार्थ जवाबी फायरिंग की गई उपरोक्त विकास दुबे घायल हो गया जिसे तत्काल ही इलाज हेतु अस्पताल ले जाया गया जहां इलाज के दौरान उसकी मृत्यु हो गई तीन हमारे पास एक्सीडेंटल आए हैं रमाकांत पंकज और प्रदीप तीनों का दो का भी हम सीटी करवा रहे हैं मल्टीपल इंजरी है लेकिन ऐसा नहीं खतरे से बाहर है और वाइटल मेंटेन कर रहे हैं वाइटल उनका बीपी डाउन था अभी डॉक्टर ने जो ट्रीटमेंट दिया मैंने देख के लिए अभी देख लिया है देखने के बाद हम उनको वाइटल मेंटेन कर अभी सीटी जरूर थी तो हमने सीटी लेकर आया दो को दो को है दो को पुलिस वालों को गोली लगी है दो एक ये है आर में यहाँ पर यहाँ से निकली और एक के पैर में वो दोनों ठीक है स्टेबल है स्टेबल है एक हाथ में छा लगा है गोली मार के निकली जैसा डॉक्टर ने बताया अभी जो अभी बंसी किया उन्होंने बताया कि सर रगड़ के निकली गोली यहाँ से And meanwhile, the forensic team has reached the incident spot to assess the situation. Moving on now, India and China are holding the meeting of the working mechanism for consultation and coordination on the border affairs. The meeting is taking place virtually and the Joint Secretary is representing India in the meeting. Last such meeting was held almost a fortnight back. During the last meeting India had conveyed to China its concerns on developments in eastern Ladakh and the violent face off in the Galwan Valley. Only last week the special representatives of India and China on the boundary issue had also talked over the phone on the 5th of July where India was represented by the NSA Ajit Doval and the foreign minister of China Wang Yi. During the conversation the national security adviser had conveyed categorically India's position on the recent developments along the line of actual control including in the Galwan Valley area. The NSA had emphasized that the Indian troops had always taken a very responsible approach towards the border management and Indian forces were deeply committed to ensuring India's sovereignty and security. Now according to sources the withdrawal of chinese troops at the gogra and the hot springs has been completed the disengagement between india and china completed at patrolling point 17 in the hot springs with this the disengagement completes at pp14 pp15 and pp17 the chinese army thinning out in the finger area the external affairs ministry maintains that the diplomatic and military officials of india and china will continue their meetings to take forward the process of disengagement and deescalation and let's now go cross uh, to our correspondent abhishek cha who is joining us with more inputs on that abhishek what we are getting to know is that the disengagement that was earlier agreed upon in the co commander level meetings uh, uh, that that this that is nearly complete what more can you add to that Okay, so uh, Nancy, the thing is that both the party, India and China, had agreed on a several um, on several meetings during diplomatic or military meetings uh, that the talks on this border dispute should continue. Uh, because uh, earlier also in a press release, uh, um, army had said uh, that the sources in army had said that uh, this whole uh, disengagement and going back thing is a little complex because of the perception of uh, line of actual control uh, between the two countries. so the talks must continue uh, on this uh, on the issue with with area specific uh, commanders and area specific experts sitting together and discussing it uh, all through the uh, different engagements also this uh, joint secretary level talk which is uh, especially dedicated to border uh, conflict management or, or uh, bordering area management this is also uh, 
being held uh, exactly al almost after 15 days. Uh, earlier also, India has clearly conveyed China about this whole Galwan Valley standoff, uh, about the Indian perception of land of actual control and, and how much uh, India actually controls in, in, in those areas and how much uh, should China be kept away from a line of actual control. So mm -hmm. all these uh, matters, all these concerns have been conveyed to China. And now sure. these, uh, these uh, sequential talks that, that are happening are in a part of those meetings which decides how much disengagement had actually taken place and how much disengagement should uh, take place more so that uh, the boundary standoff that, is, uh, that has happened actually all through these uh, last uh, few weeks uh, should cease. Okay. All right, Abhishek Jha, thanks very much for joining us uh, for the moment. We'll in fact, uh, okay, we'll uh, we'll continue this discussion, uh, in fact, uh, more with you. Uh, so we are given to understand the disengagement, uh, like you were saying, has begun. Uh, 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 any more talks that are in fact scheduled, the ones taking place right now, of course, important they are. And in the run-up to the talks today, many talks have happened. And, uh, you know, some days back, we also go, uh, got information from the LSE that, of course, the Chinese troops were moving back uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, some bit. Uh, so what uh, what can we expect now as far as these talks uh, have to yield in the future? Uh, let's see, ever since that uh, bloody standoff, the bloody uh, thing that has happened on, on the actual line of control, uh, the engagements have been uh, at the highest level. Uh, mm. One should say that uh, Foreign Minister uh, Ajay Shankar uh, also had a talk with his Chinese counterpart Wang Yi. Uh, then uh, these military commanders of the area, they are also engaged in talks joint secretary level talks are also happening. Uh, uh, so the both parties have agreed to the fact that uh, there is a dispute and that dispute has only diplomatic and uh, solution through dialogues only. Uh, there cannot be any solution through uh, physical uh, applying physical forces. So this is a mature uh, way of handling this crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, both sides have also agreed that uh, the, the behavior of their troops will be very responsible. Okay. India has said that it wants to uh, have peace and tranquility restored in those border areas as soon as possible. Hmm. So this uh, engagements at various levels where the dialogues could happen, where, the, where both parties should uh, be able to convey their point of uh, concern. Hmm. This, is, this is the process of, uh, of that disengagement uh, Will be uh, okay. through which this investment okay. will follow, sure. and uh, one can expect that the more such meetings uh, will be happening in future as well, because unless and if there is a, a total disengagement and total peace and tranquility that is back to the uh, those areas of standoff, uh, these things will continue. Okay, all right, Abhishek Jha, thanks very much for joining us for the moment and uh, sharing all those inputs. Thanks very much. And the Indian Air Force is on a high alert in the Ladakh region as early as from May. The Indian Air Force is uh, ascertained, has uh, ascertained its position in Ladakh for any challenge in the region. And the Indian Air Force has also the advantage of experience on its side to not just defend but even to attack if the need so arises. The Air Force is in dual role in Ladakh ever since the standoff in the eastern Ladakh region began. The cargo aircrafts like Globemaster, Hercules are doing transportation while Sukhois, the MiGs are ready with patrolling and attacking jobs just in case. The Indian Air Force has strengthened its chopper strength with Chinooks and Apaches. And the Air Force Chinook pilot spoke exclusively with Doodarshan News. Listen in. We have with us the Indian Air Force Chinooks pilot at the new acquisition in Indian Air Force with us to know more about Chinook, how it is helping Indian Air Force here in Power Post. As you can see, the sheer size of this machine, it's an immense machine which has proven itself worldwide. This gives us an immense avionics capability which allows us to fly by day as well as by night and take much more load and troops to the situ uh, to places where they are actually required. High altitudes, how is your experience? High altitudes, yes, they limit the capability a bit compared to sea altitudes, but this aircraft has proven itself that yes, uh, despite of the certain limitation that has caused by the weather, the terrain, the temperature, still it is much more capable. Can you tell us how you are prepared for the uh, situation right now in uh, Eastern Ladakh? We have been here for some time and we have been flying by day and night and ensuring that we are totally capable as well as prepared to land at any place, at any point of time, be it day or night. And uh, we will surely prove ourselves when time comes. Can you assure the nation how you are working here and how what uh, can they say, take from here? I can assure uh, uh, my country people that they can continue to sleep uh, in uh, rest and they need not to worry about any circumstances on border because we are here to take care of you. 
In some other news now, four Naxals have been killed in an encounter with the security forces in the Bagaha area of Bihar's West Champaran district. The operation was conducted by a joint team of the SSB and the Special Task Force. Arms and ammunition have been recovered from the spot, which includes three self-loading rifles. The ICSE and the ICS exam results for students of class 10th and 12th will be announced uh, According to a notice published on the board's website, the exams were supposed to be held in February and March, but postponed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The pending examinations were planned to be conducted in July, but with the board drawing criticism from both the students and parents, uh, it decided to cancel the examinations in view of the current situation. And several uh, state boards and the CBSE have also canceled the exams due to the same reason. The students will be evaluated on their performance in the school assessment but will also be given the opportunity to appear for the cancelled exams at a later date. The Pakistan Army resorted to unprovoked uh, ceasefire violation on the line of control in the Naushara sector in Rajori in Jammu and Kashmir and the troops responded strongly to the Pakistan firing. In the incident, Havaldar Sambur Gurung was critically injured and later succumbed to his injuries. Havaldar Sambur Gurung was a brave, highly motivated and a sincere soldier. The nation uh, always remain indebted to him for his supreme sacrifice and devotion to duty. And moving on now, taking a look at the impact of COVID-19 in the country and in a significant achievement, the number of recovered cases has overshot the number of COVID-19 active cases by 2,18,827. The number of recovered cases is 1.75 times. That's almost twice the number of active cases. The total number of recoveries is nearing the 5 lakh mark. The total recoveries among the COVID-19 patients stand at 4,95,512. Now, now, that's a result of focused attention on effective surveillance through house-to-house -house contact tracing, early detection and isolation, as well as timely and effective clinical management of the COVID-19 cases. And presently, there are 2,76,685 active cases and all are under active medical supervision. India's COVID-19 recovery rate is also steadily increasing. The recovery rate among COVID-19 patients has crossed over 62%. Amid the new features being constantly added in the Arogya Setu application, while well, the app has now registered more than 14 crore downloads, and with the new milestone, Arogya Setu is now listed among the most downloaded applications in the world in the shorter span of time. Now, this Techno Shield has emerged as a reliant bodyguard in India's fight against COVID-19. The recently added new feature of the app enables users to check their health status with the help of Bluetooth Connect. The Arogya Setu now provides users date, time and location where they met the COVID positive person and for what. Duration you can see that under uh, the tab see recent contacts under the you are safe category. Well, if you click on that, you will get to know the contacts that you may have encountered in the recent past. Moving on now, the Uttar Pradesh government will impose a weekend lockdown in the state from 10 at night till 5 in the morning on Monday to check the spread of COVID-19 and other communicable diseases. The state government has permitted movements only for providing medical and essential services in the state. This decision has been taken after reviewing the present situation of COVID-19 pandemic and for putting an, uh, putting an effective check on it. All the offices and markets will remain closed during the period. In a bid to curb the growing curve of COVID-19 cases in Bihar, 10 of its districts again underwent lockdown from today. Patna, Kaimur and Purnia districts are under lockdown till 16 July under Khagadia under lockdown till the 14th of July. In Bhagalpur and Kaimur, only urban areas are under lockdown. All the train and air services have not been restricted. West and East Champaran are also under partial lockdown since yesterday. The district administration of Patna, uh, in fact, has urged people to wear masks and maintain social distancing. He said that all the economic activities except essential services will remain closed till the 16th of this month. 
A strict seven-day lockdown was clamped in all the containment zones across West Bengal from Thursday evening as the state witnessed the highest single-day spike in COVID-19 cases and fatalities. The containment zones that went into lockdown from five in the evening on Thursday are spread across 20 of the state's 23 districts. The state government has listed 25 containment zones in Kolkata, 93 in North 24 Paragonas, 54 in South 24 Paragonas and 56 in Hawra, the top four hotspot districts. The containment zones and buffer zones around them have been clubbed together to constitute a broad-based containment zone where the total shutdown has been imposed. And in Assam, with the spike in the number of COVID-19 positive cases, the lockdown in two upper Assam districts of Golaghat and Jorhat began last night. In the Golaghat district, the lockdown has been imposed for eight days till 17 July, whereas a seven-day lockdown has been imposed in Jorhat district till the 15th. It is also to be mentioned uh, that three other districts, namely Kamrup, Dimahaso and West Karbi Anglong are already under lockdown. The total number of COVID-19 cases in the state have reached uh, to around 14,032, out of which 4,855 are active cases and 9,147 uh, have recovered so far. Now, with five more deaths uh, reported on Thursday, the death toll has increased to 27. Moving on now, the United States on Thursday imposed sanctions on three senior officials of the Chinese Communist Party for alleged human rights abuses targeting ethnic and religious minorities. Washington blacklisted Xinjiang region's Communist Party secretary Chen Kuanggao, a member of China's powerful Politburo, and three other officials. The highly anticipated action followed months of Washington's hostility towards Beijing over China's handling of the COVID-19 outbreak and its tightening grip on Hong Kong. The sanctions were imposed under the Global Magnitsky Act. The U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said Washington is also barring Chen, Zhu, Wang and their immediate families as well as other unnamed Chinese Communist Party officials from traveling to the U.S. The UN estimates that more than a million Muslims have been detained in the camps in the Xinjiang region. And with that, it's a wrap on this edition of the news. Thanks for being with us.